Hello everyone, my name is Quill, and welcome to another episode of Evolution of Horde Base for Alpha 19. We have two major projects to start this week, the Outer Wall and expanding the bunker that we started last week. Unlike our earlier builds, this is going to be a bit more complex and require a hefty amount of resources, so let's talk about changes to our production setup. So I've moved all the forges and workbenches into this room, but it's going to be temporary. For cement mix, we now have four forges dedicated to smelting stone and two cement mixers for make, making the concrete mix. The increase in forges is for two reasons. First of all, the upcoming projects are going to be massive resource sinks, so having materials will be key. Second, I'm forgetful, and so having more forges means I don't have to always check to make sure one or two are constantly producing. Instead, I can kick them off and spend the rest of my time exploring, and we'll still have enough materials to work with when I come back. There are two more forges on the other side of the room, but those are for handling rebar, bullet casings, forged iron, and steel, and whatever else that isn't cement mix. With all that out of the way, let's get started. To begin our wall, we want to carve out an 11 by 7 area, one block deep. So if we line ourselves up with this drawbridge, we're going to get right in the middle and start digging right here. I'll use wood frame blocks in order to help gauge out the area that I'm building, and I want to have one block going underneath here. So since I have five blocks there, I just need to extend right here and right here. All right, with that done, we can go ahead and move it out by uh, five blocks on each side. Okay, so as you can see, we have a seven by 11 area here. And if we check one, one of these uh, rows will be underneath the drawbridge. That's exactly what we want. So we can go ahead and pick up all of these wood blocks, place down rebar, and reinforce it. Now, in the corner, we'll place four blocks, just like so, and we're going to make them two blocks tall. Once that's done, only the two outer columns go up by two blocks, so that one and this one. We're going to leave that gap right there. Then what we're going to do is go ahead and connect them here. And on the outside column, we're also going to, we're going to extend the outside column by one. And we're actually going to make that one an extra, make that a little bit taller. So, so it's going to look like this. I know it's a little bit hard to tell, but there's an opening in the center. We'll go ahead and reinforce these so it's easier to see. So as you can see, there is a hole right there in the middle. We're going to use that later on for a trap, but what we're going to do now is go ahead and repeat that same design and inside of each of the corners. With each of the corners taken care of, we can go ahead and put two rows of rebar frame blocks on this third area. So as you can see, skip the first two, Let's do it right there. And you can do this on both sides. Perfect. All right, and now what we're gonna do is take the rebar frame blocks, hold R, select shape, and then select rebar frame wedge. Then go to advance, and we're gonna rotate it a few times until it lines up how we want, just like that. So you have the slope down at the bottom, and then you have a smooth uh, flat area up top. And we're gonna put this all the way across. And then we're actually going to repeat that up top as well. Take rebar frame blocks, hold R, select shape, and then we will have the rebar frame wedge tip. We'll start right here and we'll select on face. And so what that'll do is as long as I'm pointing at the wall, I can rotate it on there, or if I change, it'll rotate with me. So we're gonna place it just like so. All right, and with that part done, we can go ahead and take, bring up the same shape and rotate it and place them just like so. Okay, so as you can see, the base or the wall is starting to take shape. Um, just to offer a little bit of explanation of why I'm using things like these uh, wedge blocks and different things, I'm trying to get away from just making a square um, while th that's effective. Um, I'm trying to look for something that's also functional, but looks a little bit better so this is a personal choice once you see how it is if you don't like it feel free to change it it's all good 
Um, I'm just trying to offer something that you know looks a little pleasing to look at, at least in my opinion. Oh, actually, we forgot. I did not cover this side. So, if we take hold our select shape and go to rebar frame wedge, back to advanced. This is the shape that we want. So again, it's just the opposite of this one. So slope going the other way, the small um, section. And place that right here. For the next portion, we're gonna take, hold R again, go to shape, pull up rebar frame plates, and set them to simple and then advanced. That way it resets it. And I can just rotate a few times before it's on top. Okay, so pull up rebar again, set it back to simple, and then pull up shape. And we're gonna do a rebar frame. And for this, we're just gonna put three of them on the side, like that. Okay, and now we're gonna do something a little bit different. If we take and pull up the rebar frame wedge again, we're just gonna rotate it a few times, and I want it to look just like that. And you'll, oops, you'll see why in just a moment. Actually, we might be able to show you now. Okay, yeah, I've got my hatches done. And so we'll bring those up top. And we'll bring the electric fence posts as well. So the goal here is to give us a extra place to um, shoot zombies from in case, you know, we get overrun or anything like that. So instead of just putting a hatch where you can't actually hit what's below, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna do a little bit of finagling just to get it to work how we want. Let's see, let's go ahead and make some ladder pieces. So back over here with the hatch, um, you'll want to use something stronger than just iron hatches. Uh, so I just went with tier one vault. I'm gonna rotate it just like so. So it's not very secure right now because the vault hatch is resting on top of a wood ladder, which means that if that ladder breaks, that vault hatch is gone. So that's why we're gonna set in these other things, but we just wanna test them out first. And yeah, that does give a clean area to shoot from. So a commenter last week did point out something I didn't know. Um, I have to give credit to them. So Sol, thank you very much for this. Um, if you take a wet concrete block, you can actually hold R and go to shape and you get more options than you would if you used a rebar frame. The only difference is using wet concrete blocks makes a tier one concrete piece instead of a uh, tier two. So you kind of have to pick and choose if that's what you want to do. For this case, it's going to be better because I don't have to take a wood frame block and then upgrade it all the way. We're going to select a wet concrete pole. We're going to hold R, go to advance, and rotate it a few times until it lines up just like so up against the hatch. The reason for this is that in case the ladder gets broken, the hatch won't fall. It's now connected to this wet concrete block, and so we could actually just go down and knock that out, and the hatch is still secure. So that's that's the reason that we're putting that wet concrete block right there. So in case you're curious, wet concrete um, blocks can be made with the four, uh, cement mixer. It just costs 10 concrete mix to do it. Um, it's a little not too slow, so uh, you can get a nice decent chunk of them built up pretty quickly. Okay, so while we're up top, we're gonna go ahead and make a uh, add one more thing in, which is gonna be some iron bars. So if we aim them at a side and then select on face, they'll actually line up just like so. So the reason for these iron bars is just in case this bottom area gets compromised, we can still take and shoot anything that's underneath there. Um, if they're coming up the ladders, we can still aim and get them from here. It's a little bit tight, but it's better than nothing because otherwise the option is to just watch them break down the hatch. So it's just an extra option. Um, now what we're going to do is go ahead and set up reinforcement. So, or not reinforcement, but a just a way to keep us from falling. Like if we were to get up top, we would just simply slide over. So let's go ahead and take these same wet concrete blocks and we're gonna rotate them. For anyone who's seen the other videos, I think you know where I'm going with this. And then we'll go up top. So, 
of what this does is if we did decide to use the bottom area, we can actually still perform melee from here. And that bar helps to keep the zombies at range where they're not running right up on this area. So they have to break down that entire bar in order to get here. It's an extra layer of reinforcement while not stopping us from being able to actually hit things. The bar up here is also in case we were up top and we wanted to shoot. By adding this, if we would have done square blocks, you can see there's very little space that I can actually hit. But by doing these slopes, I've got more uh, room to work with and this bar keeps me from walking over the edge. As well as stopping zombies from being able to climb up. At this point, people are probably curious what the holes are for, so let's go ahead and knock that out. If we take the rebar frame wedge and we go back to advance again, I do that a lot. We're looking for, we're trying to get it like this, to where you have the flat portion there and then the slope here. And this one is just a personal taste. I find it better, or I find it more appealing to look at than just doing square blocks. So that's kind of do whatever you want with that one. Um, by the way, just as did you know, if um, if you're rotating through and you're like, oh, I just you saw the shape you wanted, but you missed it. If you hold shift and press R, you can actually go backwards in your rotations. So left click to go one direction and shift R to go the other. And we can add in our first trap. So we have some electric fence posts and what we're going to do is if you go to place them they're i mean they're great at stopping zombies but they get broken very easily so by having this indention in there we can actually place the electric fence post right there on the inside and then we can also cover them up so if we go back to shape and select the um, rebar frame wedge tip and then put it on on face again we can aim at that it might be a little bit touchy but you can aim uh, it's gonna make me a liar now. That's fine. Anyways, just go to advance and rotate the thing so it looks like that. All right, and with those sides done, we can now take a um, vault hatch and place it just like so. Oh, nighttime! Didn't even realize I was getting late. We'll be fine. Okay, and so at this point, if we were to take and wire it up. You could easily just open the hatch, run the wire over there, and it would be active, or, you know, wire everything up. Whenever a zombie comes over here and starts jumping, the electric wire will actually shock them. So, that's going to be something that we activate a little bit closer to Horde Night, though. I need to go ahead and gather up some more materials um, before I start doing too much more. But we have just a couple final uh, things to add over here. So let's pull up the wet concrete block again. Um, we'll go ahead and grab, uh, go ahead and grab some more of those. Okay. So one of the things that I don't like is how you know it kind of just looks like this thing is falling off the side and stuff like that. So we're gonna take and make a slight change. Down below, we're gonna take and add that's a normal rebar block right there and so this is on the inside the part facing the inside um, instead of doing just the triangle pieces like that we're gonna make it a little bit different but just for the um, spots where the uh, drawbridge lays it's because I want it to look a little bit more reinforced that's a personal choice um, so do it however you want and place them just like so and after that, we can go ahead and finish up this side with the normal frame wedge tip. And just because I don't want to forget about them, we'll go ahead and put these guys in there too. And eventually we'll wire those up, but I'm not worried about getting those done for this work night. Um, go ahead and place these hatches here. Just having a little bit of trouble locating where it's supposed to go, so let's just go up by one block and try there. There we go. So yeah, sometimes you have to play with it a little bit, but there we go. So eventually we can wire up this side as well, but it's kind of pointless to do until the fence or until the wall is all the way around the base. So let's go ahead and see what else we need to do. Oh, okay. So as you can see, the 
wet concrete blocks we placed are nearly done drying so we can go ahead and start reinforcing those that way they're tier two um, honestly if you can reinforce them to steel that's also great just because they will be taking a majority of the beating all right i would like to go ahead and add one more thing in just to uh, kind of make this feel a little bit more complete and again this is another one of those that's a personal choice um, I'm going to use a wet concrete pole and select a pants and rotate it a few times until it lines up just along the edge of the drawbridge so this one I'm doing that because it makes it just feel like it's more solid and like you know it actually does belong there instead of just having an opening but the other thing is oh, sorry thought I heard a zombie the other thing is by having that there um, we're still able to shoot down below if a zombie was on this side and leave the drawbridge open um, so just just a little extra thing and to make this feel a little bit more secure I'm gonna take and go back to rebar frame wedge and simple place it just like so nope, out of concrete mix and there we go we now have a spot where we can run out to in the middle of the horde night if we wanted to fight from up here and didn't want to fall over and also if you know it started to get overrun we could still shoot the zombies and as well as uh, if they were climbing up the hatch we could lower it and still shoot them from here so a little bit it's tight but hey it's an option so all right with that I'm gonna go ahead and work on getting some more materials and we'll start working on the parking garage afterwards okay so I went and got a few things that we need for the electrical grid and um, this is actually gonna be one of my favorite parts about this build so one of the things that I absolutely hate are cables running everywhere I prefer to hide them as much as possible um, but that can sometimes be a bit difficult However, for this for this portion, if we take another wet rebar um, or a wet concrete block and set it to simple, the shape that I'm using here is going to be the wet concrete pole centered. So not the um, not the one that's off to the side like that, but the one that's dead in the middle. Um, let's go ahead and grab these so I can actually see everything I'm doing. Alright, and so I'm placing it on these corners and making them three tall. That's just, um, I like the way it looks. So, again, if you want to go taller, if you don't want to do them at all, that's completely fine. But on top of them, I'm putting a electrical relay. Okay, so what I usually do is I connect these two that are across from each other. So you could uh, eventually they will they will span the entire length of the base, but this is just to kind of show you the the um, the idea. So if we grab that one from up top, fall down, and wire it into the electrical uh, fence, as you can see, there is no wire. It is completely hidden because it's going straight down that pole into there. So um, yeah, that's a. Uh, kind of the reason why I use that design oh, crap gotta go back up um, you can then stretch it from one side to the other and wire up the fence so go ahead and do that now so this is just gonna be a temporary setup we're just gonna wire that over there and that's actually the wrong one but that's okay because we can just take and go take you and connect you there. Perfect. Need some gas and an engine. Let me go grab those from storage. Okay, turn that on. All right, so I know a lot of people have played around with traps. They're not exactly something new, but I'm going to show you the reason about why I'm using the um, the electric fence post is so that once the um, once the wall is complete and there's no entrance to the base, no typical one, like right now zombies can just run past the fence, but once the once this uh, entire wall is finished, um, zombies won't have any option but to try to run to the nearest opening. 
since everything else is going to be reinforced, it's going to be these spots right here, similar to like they do for the base back there. Well, um, obviously what's going to happen is they are going to eventually get pushed up. And if they do, they get electrocuted. And whenever I was testing it, good lord, that took a lot more damage than I anticipated. Whenever I was running tests on it, it actually worked out really well. I increased the horde size. Um, spawned in a bunch of zombies and everything i had very i think i had like three spider monkeys over the course of an maybe 20 minutes or so make it past that uh barrier but for the most part everything was getting caught on the electrical fence so that's the design i chose to roll with hey guys so after edit after i began editing this video i realized that just explaining how to build this was taking way too long and so I didn't want to make the video, you know, overly long by showing how to start the parking garage and things like that. So I'll just kind of show what I did. We can go ahead and get to the horde. Um, we built this portion together. And then I actually just took and built the front two blocks over here and over here. That way we can just cover some more ground. Um, and then I also took and built the same exact shape over here. Um, didn't think I needed to show that just because, again, I've already explained how to build it, so just repeating it on both sides. I also went ahead and extended the foundation out by one more block. I thought I had that recorded, but I didn't, and it's okay. Alright, well, with that, we're going to go ahead I'm going to do some last minute preparations, just make sure there's no spots that need to be repaired, and we'll be ready for the horde. Alright guys, so this is the base that we have ready for tonight's horde. Um, since the walls aren't connected yet, it's not going to be as effective as it will be next week whenever they are hopefully conjoined. Um, however, if we do get lucky and a zombie gets caught on it, if they step up on this bar, they will get shocked by the electric fence, so they shouldn't be able to go over it. If they do, it'll be one or two of them, so it won't be too much to worry about. One of the things I am going to do is I've got a robotic sledge, and I'm actually going to just take and place it right here. And that way, if uh, the zombies do get underneath the thing and we're up top, it'll still work and attack the any zombies that are close to it while we're still able to shoot them. Um, and if we run away, obviously it turns off. We can actually take a block, place it there, and then put a junk turret on top of it. And it will shoot and not damage anything that's uh, any of our parts. So... Now, obviously, I do have things like concrete mix on me, ammo, and some iron to repair the hatches. I think we're going to be just fine tonight. Um, we're giving ourselves more options on where to escape from. So, I think we're going to be good. Go ahead and close that up. I just want to see how it works from over here. Okay, so they're wanting to just attack the side. And again, I kind of expected that with the base being you know, not finished, or the walls, so that's fine, but we're still able to come in here and melee them down. So, since they're really not even damaging the base too much, this is actually kind of a, we could just relax for the most part, but that's not fun to watch, nor to do, so... I'm just going to keep attacking them. I'm going to see if anything changes by going out to one of these sides. Again, since this, since the wall is not complete, they're going to start attacking points of it like the, uh, the flat spots that you see there. But next week, whenever we complete it, it'll be a bit better. Um, the main thing that these spots serve for right now is if we did get overrun down below, we would have a nice safe spot we could come to, we could close the door, and even if they're in that building, they can't jump over here. Okay, so guys, I've kind of realized that since we're only dealing with 8 zombies, this really isn't too much of a challenge. I'm going to go ahead and stop it so that we can increase the number of zombies. So give me just a second. Let's go up to 24. So guys, as you can see, even with 24 zombies, they're not really banging up the side of the base as much because of those bars. So we could just sit here and shoot them away with very little problem. So 
the bright side is once the wall is finished we'll actually have um, a lot more space to work with because we'll be able to freely move outside of there um, but for this week we're using this base again as the fallback point So I'll need to do something, if, uh, I'll need to find a way to stop the birds from, you know, tearing that up, but it's going to be alright this week. Oh no! So the only thing that I think I've noticed with more zombies is they're breaking down the hatches quicker, but we're at the point where we're not even really using them too much, even if a zombie dog got in or anything like that, um, we can easily address it without worrying. And as long as we're not directly on the bar, they're not even really attacking the base, except for these birds that are kind of getting annoying. Don't be breaking my stuff down. So all in all, I'm not uh, I'm not too disappointed with this base. Um, even though we haven't gotten any demolishers yet, that's uh, kind of weird. Um, we've increased the number of zombies, and it's really not even that much harder to uh, keep under control. Alright, so I want to go ahead and move them to the other side of the base. I'm just going to come over here, reload this junk turret, and they should all start following me. And we'll just put it right there. Let that thing do, it, do some work for a bit. Bring them over to another side so they don't knock out those hatches all the way. Alright, let's bring them over here. <laughs> I'm gonna leave him there. Alright. So we did have um, one break, and this was at the very end when I was trying to take out all the spider monkeys that were clogged up right there. Um, so that's the only block that is actually broken out of here. Even the hatches are fine. Oh, go away. Um, so besides that, I want to introduce y'all to my friend. This is William. Um, William is now a fixture of the base for some reason. So I'm going to let him chill right there. Oh, hello. All right, looks like we got another mini horde. For, all right, so I think that's it. We did good. We did good, bud. All right, so let's go ahead and check out. Let's go ahead and check out the rest of the base, and uh, see just how well it did. So, um, yeah, all in all, not too bad. It doesn't look like there's any spot that took too much of a beating. Again, these center points did, um, but it's easily repairable during the middle of the horde. So, not bad at all. I was disappointed that we didn't see anything hit the um, the electric wires on the on the walls, but it was also kind of expected since the walls aren't finished. They're simply too much of a pro of a massive project to get knocked out all at once. So, I'm gonna go ahead and loot these bags, and then we'll make one last look at the uh, at the base. Okay, so all in all, it, it came out pretty well. So the goals for next week are actually going to be pretty simple. We're actually going to take this base and we're going, or we're going to take the wall and connect it on this side and on the opposite side, as well as add in a couple traps using the dirt and everything that's left over here. So we're going to play around with those a little bit. I'm not sure if the traps I have in mind are going to work out that well, but we'll find out next week, of course. Um, in the meantime, I'm Quill, that's William, and we just want to say thank you very much for watching this video. I think I'll have another one out this Friday, actually, instead of Monday, and it'll be going over the parking lot portion of the base. Um, there won't be a horde associated with that video, but instead, um, we'll just kind of go over how to dig safely below the base, so if you want to see it, cool. It's focusing more on the home base ver portion of this build instead of just the horde base. So I know that's not everyone's cup of tea. If you want to see what it is, uh, hope you check out the video on Friday. Thank you very much, and y'all have a good one.